It could be said that, Tracy Wigginton's life from the very start, was headed on a crash course in disaster. Wigginton's parents divorced when she was very little. She went to live with her grandparents, and they soon tricked her parents into signing adoption papers which ended their parental rights and visitations. Tracy has often claimed that her grandparents, George and Avril Wigginton, were both very abusive. She later claimed that not only was her grandfather sexually abusing her almost from the start, her grandmother Avril was extremely abusive, and was heavily into Satanism and the occult. From a very early age, Tracy learned the ins and outs of witchcraft, Satanism, and even tarot reading in which she became adept at from a very young age. People were amazed at how well she knew the cards and how to use them. Tracy had an older adopted sister named Michelle. Michelle was unfortunately a mixed-race baby in a racist home. Because of her dark skin, she was tormented and beaten, used as a workhorse and treated in the most harshest and cruel ways. As she grew older, she managed to leave home, but Tracy was stuck to endure the wrath of her grandparents. Whether it was mental defect from the start, or it was because of all the trauma that she endured, Tracy was said to have had multiple personalities. One was little Tracy, while the other was big Tracy, which was her actual self. Another was a man named Bobby who was cruel and violent. When she became Bobby, it said that she would kill animals, even her own, and claimed to be a vampire, and wanted to drink their blood. The final personality was one just called the Observer, who controlled all of them. Tracy Tracy happened to be a lesbian, and was living with three other women, Lisa Tashinsky, who was 24 years old, Kim Jervis who was 23, and Tracy Wah who was also 23. They were all together on the night of October 20, 1989 in Brisbane, Australia, in Tracy's car when the quartet spotted 47-year-old Edward Baldock, a council worker, and father of four, was simply waiting for a taxi after drinking heavily and playing darts with friends. They approached the older man and asked him if he wanted to have sex. He eagerly accepted and was asked to follow them down to the Brisbane riverfront. Although he was attempting to cheat on his wife, he surely didn't deserve what was about to happen to him. Edward, despite his lack of good judgment on this particular night, was normally a very loving husband and a father and grandfather who the kids absolutely adored and loved. Sadly, he would never see them again after this night. When the five got to the park, Tracy kissed the older man and removed her top, showing him her breasts, and said to him that she had to go to the restroom and told him to get undressed. He did and folded his clothing into a neat pile. As he was doing so, he noticed that Tracy had dropped her debit card, and he placed it in his shoe, probably meaning to give it back to her when she returned. Unfortunately for Edward, Tracy was not going to the bathroom, she was going for a knife. She came back and plunged the knife into his back and easily held the man down as she continued to stab and stab until there was a huge gaping hole in his back. Strangely enough, the older man was still not dead. As he laid there gurgling, she held his head back and slit his throat from ear to ear, nearly decapitating him, and then proceeded to drink his blood. A fisherman found the body by early morning, just as Edward's wife was reporting him missing. The police didn't have very far to look. They found Tracy's bank, bank card in his shoe. At first, they didn't think, even for a moment that a woman could be responsible. The crime was much too violent. They had no idea just how wrong they were. At first, they were looking for at least one man, maybe more. They wanted to question Tracy, and thought that maybe she may have witnessed a crime. When they got to her door, the first thing they noticed was her size. She was a very big girl. Tracy was six foot tall and well over 250 pounds. They still didn't really think that she had anything to do with it. Although her size and strength would have allowed it, she was much too articulate, and after all, she was cooperating. When they asked if they could search her car, she allowed them. They found a bloody towel which raised their suspicion immediately. Tracy had admitted to police that she was at the park the previous evening, but denied having anything to do with the murder. 
She claimed that she was with her friends and playing on the swings the previous evening, and that was where she had to have lost her bank card. The police asked her to accompany them to the park and show them where she was and walk through her motions of the previous evening. It was a ruse though. What they were actually doing was getting a search warrant for her place and questioning her friends when one of them caved and admitted to what happened. Soon, all three were talking and telling authorities about witchcraft, Satanism, and how Tracy thought she was a vampire and wanted to find a victim to feed. Can't you just imagine the expressions on their faces? Tracy was insane. They were eventually all arrested and Tracy received life in prison by the Supreme Court of Queensland with a minimum of 13 years. Tashinsky was also convicted of murder and Jervis of manslaughter, while Wa was cleared. In 2006, Wigginton assaulted a fellow inmate and a prison guard, but was still granted parole on January 11, 2012. In April of 2008, Tashinsky was released under the Resettlement Leave Program and given a maximum of 12 hours leave every two months for six months. After that, she was free. It's unknown what became of Edward's widow and family, but we hope they're doing as well as they can be under such sad circumstances. Rest in peace, Edward. If you liked the story, please consider liking, subscribing and ringing that bell notification and sharing. It's almost Halloween, so we love it when you share our videos anytime, but especially this time of year. It really helps us out a lot. The links to all our social medias are below in the description box, as well as a link to our online store where you can get all kinds of cool graveyard dance merch ranging from face masks of all types to coffee mugs, and even t-shirts, hoodies and long sleeve shirts. Thanks again y'all, and we'll see you again next time.